سورة الكوثر قال تعالى إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فسل لربك وانحر إن شانيك هو الأبطح We will come back to this man again in this surah. <coughs> it is an incredibly sad event in anyone's life to lose a child. May Allah protect us from that. The emotional pain, the profound effect of losing your own child is exceptional. <laughs> Prophet Sallallahu had three sons and four daughters. All of his sons, they all passed away even before reaching the age of uh, adulthood. This hatred for the Prophet was so entrenched in the hearts of the people that in Makkah, when the first son of Prophet died, Qasim, this man that we were just talking about, he came out of his house dancing and shouting, Battara Muhammad. Remember this word again, Batta. We will come back to this word. He said, Muhammad is cut off. Battara means, the actual meaning, literal meaning is an animal whose tail is cut off. But in phrase, uh, the phrase is used to show someone who does not have any lineage. This is hatred and animosity multiplied. No one, no enemy, it doesn't matter, no enemy celebrates the death of anyone's child. The Prophet ﷺ, last son Ibrahim, died in Medina, and the Prophet ﷺ moved to Medina. And this word came up again. There was a man, As bin Mu'ayl. He would meet the Prophet, say salam, because these are the munafiqeen in, in Medina. He would meet the Prophet, he would say his salam. As the Prophet moved on, he would turn back to his companion and say, I met the Battara. I met the one who is cut off. When Ibrahim passed away, the munafikin of Medina, they used to say, Inna hadha sa'bi qad battara layya. This man who cannot have sons, he has been cut off. Contrast to the, the previous surah, which was all about the enemies of Prophet Muhammad, this surah, is all about the honor of Prophet. Prophet uh, Allah revealed this surah. The first word, O oh Muhammad, we indeed have given you al kawthar The word kawthar is a hyperbole of the word kathir, which means abundance, more. Kawthar means something that is more and more and more, and there is no limit to it. It's not only in quantity, it's quality as well. It is the best of the best of the best, and there is no limit. The mushrikun of Mecca and then the munafiqeen of Medina, they used to talk about what Prophet lacked. He does not have sons, he does not have any wealth, he does not have any political power. He does not have any even followers. Allah is comforting Prophet. And there are so many surah Doha and Alam Nashra and, and I would just point out just a few things that we just miss the honor of the Prophet. Allah in the Quran swears by himself. Allah swears by himself. But when Allah swears, Allah says, Wa Rabbaka by your Lord, O Muhammad. Allah swears by the life of Prophet himself. Allah says, 
la amraka by your life o prophet ibrahim alayhi salam he made the dua that oh allah send someone who would show the people of how to worship you in the house of allah and purify this house of allah prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam had this deep uh, intention in his heart he wanted so badly to pray towards kaaba when allah revealed the verse of changing the direction of the kaaba allah just did not say turn your face and uh, face the qibla uh, turn you uh, change the qibla and face the kaaba allah did not say that allah said we saw your face turn to sky and we say we are changing the qibla for you so you would be placed please and there are so many verses in the quran that elevates the honor and status of prophet and then there is kawfa there is the general meaning of kawfa that is good upon good o oh, prophet don't worry you have the best of the best that i have to offer that allah has to offer anas al-tala anhu narrates that they were sitting with the prophet and prophet had by his back to the wall and he was dozing off and then he raised his head opened his eyes and smiled and anas al-tala anhu said this was a big smile and we asked what happened why are you so happy and the prophet said i have been revealed a sura al kawtha do you know what is al kawtha al kawtha is much goodness and it is a river in jannah and it is a pond it is a cistern it is a hole on the day of judgment Let me briefly talk about no one in this world owns a river. People have acres and acres of woodland and a river <coughs> might pass through it. They might have a right on the water or whatever, a part of it. No one owns. No one can claim that even most the richest, the wealthiest person in the world cannot claim that I own a river. river amazon or river danube no one has that right allah is saying i have given you a river not just in dunya i have given you a river in jannah and as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they will still come back to inshallah later so this goodness this al kawthar that has not been given to any prophet how would prophet say thank you how do we say thank you to that allah says fasalli li rabbika wanhar oh muhammad that's how you say thank you then pray then say your salah and then do your sacrifice only for the sake of allah dear brothers and sisters we living here sometimes we do not really realize the blessings of allah upon us just the fact that we are sitting here the ability to talk to see to hear and that allah enabled us to gather us here to talk about allah they are right now our muslim brothers and sisters half of our ummah they don't know if they sleep in the same roof whether that roof would be blown up by cluster bombs or not they don't know if they send their children out in the street that a bullet of a sniper would found their neck in yemen there are muslims who are actually physically dying because there is no food say thank you we owe the gratitude whatever we have whatever we are given you name it it is only from the blessings and mercy of allah 
the way to say thank you, first and foremost, is putting your head, your forehead on the ground in salah. And then Allah says to Prophet Wanhar, give sacrifice. The Prophet وسلم, we talked about that in Makkah he did not have much. And Allah is saying here, give sacrifice. And as most of the scholars say, this refers to Yawmun Nahar, the day of the sacrifice on the day of Eid. So now, this is also a prediction to the Prophet. Within 11 years, within 11 years after the Prophet moved to Medina, Prophet returned to Mecca. He gave 100 camels in sacrifice when he did his last Hajj. And he had thousands of companions with him. And then the last verse, in Nasha'aniyaka huwal abda. O Prophet, do not worry. Have absolutely no concerns. Your enemies, they are the ones, but the, the word came back again. Allah has again changed the meaning of the word. You are not the but the, you are not cut off. It's your enemies who will be cut off. Cut off with, for, from any goodness, cut off from this world, cut off from the bounty and mercy of Allah. Just final comments on, on this surah. The first thing to realize is Allah himself is consoling Prophet. This surah is the honor and the love Allah has for his Prophet. Allah himself consoles Prophet, not through anyone else. The second thing, the same people who used to call Prophet names, who used to call Prophet Batta, the Prophet is still giving da'wah to these people. The Prophet is still calling them, come to the goodness, come to Allah, come to Jannah. Dear brothers and sisters in da'wah are personal grudges. People would say, if you have ever stood on a table in the town center, you know what people say. You will be called this and that. Personal grudge, our personal frustration absolutely does not matter when we are calling others to Allah. Brothers and sisters, sometimes the most hurtful words come from your own family. Be it parents to children, or children to parents, or our families, or friends. When we call upon the truth, when we call upon the worship of Allah, be ready. Be prepared. You will be resisted. And finally, I wanted to just touch on Kawthar again. Prophet was with his companions and they went to visit a graveyard where the Prophet taught his companions how to say the dua uh, when you visit the grave. And then he said, we wish we could see our brothers. We wish we could see our brothers. So his companions were quite surprised and they said, aren't we your brothers, O Prophet? And the Prophet said, no, you are my companions. My brothers are those who have not seen me. And I have not seen them, but they will believe in me and follow. They are brothers and sisters that you and me. And on the day of judgment, 
I would stand by Kauthar, which is now, so Kauthar has got two forms. One is it's the river in Jannah. And on the day of judgment, when the sun is just a handful away, it's beating down. Everyone is standing, waiting for Allah to start the day of judgment. Forget about the anxiety that we would feel on that day. Just that, the physical discomfort. All we need is a bit of a shade and a bit of water. This Al-Kawthar would be a pond on the day of judgment. And there will be two pipes coming from the river of Al-Kawthar into this pond. And Prophet ﷺ would stand by this pond and this pond would have small bowls, cups of gold and silver. And Prophet would hand this water to the people. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever drinks from this pond would never be thirsty again. Now coming back to this hadith, when the Prophet ﷺ said, I would stand by the pond and give them water. So his companions asked, Oh Prophet, how would you recognize them? Because Prophet just said, I have never met them and they have never met me. And Prophet ﷺ said, Do you recognize a horse, a black horse, with white marking on the face and white feet? This is one of the beauty of horses. Especially for those who come from the Arab world, they know the beauty of the horses is having those black and white marks, white marks on the face and feet. So do you know, do you recognize a horse with white markings on the face and feet? And they say, yes. And the Prophet said, that's how I would recognize him. They would have, they would come with white glowing hands and feet and forehead because of the water of the wudu. Our recognition to the Prophet coming back to is through the Salah. Why do we make wudu except to Salah? The Prophet would recognize us. We would have our hands and feet glowing, our faces glowing to get the water. But then it comes a severe warning as well. The Prophet ﷺ continues and says, but then angels would come and start driving away these people. So I would be handing water and the angels would come and start shoving these people away. And I would say, my companions, these are my brothers. I know them. And he would be told, oh Prophet, you don't know what they invented in the religion after you were gone. And the Prophet ﷺ would say, then away with them. Thank you of time, inshallah. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, today there is that pressure to change Islam somehow. There are people who stand in the parliament in this country and say we need to bring Islam to 21st century. Their first attack the first step is always attack on the Prophet. I have absolutely no doubt about that. They would attack the Prophet. They would attack the Sunnah of the Prophet to cast doubts in the minds of Muslims. The Prophet himself, he has al tawfiq Our goodness, whatever we get, is through the teachings of the Prophet that Allah has sent us. 